SQL Server, the engine, records information and error messages in its engine log files. And you'll want to look at these occasionally, not necessarily every day, but if you're looking for a specific uh, cause of a, of, a, of a perceived problem, this may be a good place to look. You're going to start in Management Studio. You're going to have be connected to your instance of SQL Server. In this case, this is my dev and test instance. You're going to go down to the management entry in the hierarchy, and you're going to look at SQL Server logs. Notice that there are multiple logs. Every time a SQL Server instance is taken down, the current log, which is the one that's capturing information as the engine is operating, is closed out and becomes archive number one. The previous archive number one becomes two, two becomes three, and so on. When the SQL Server is restarted, there's a new current log that then begins to capture information and error messages. You simply open it up, right? I right-clicked and opened up, I viewed the log file, and now I'm going to expand the log file. We're going to look at current, and this is a stack, so the most current record informational message is at the top. The ones from the very beginning are at the bottom. Um, when SQL Server starts up, the first thing it this is a good way to understand how SQL Server works, too. The first thing it does after it gets a process ID is to check security. It then goes and it starts the master database. The master database, if it's anything wrong with it, the SQL Server instance will not start. It does the resource governor. MS6, MS SQL system resource is another system database you never hear about. Then the model and tempdb system databases are mounted. Um, if there are, um, it's, it, oh, it opens the listener. It's ready for client connections. MSDB is the last of the system databases that it mounts. And then it begins to mount user databases. Now if there's a transaction against a user database that wasn't committed when the SQL Server came down or was taken down, then it is going to identify those transactions, it stores them on the transaction log, and it is going to roll them forward into the physical database on disk. If there are incomplete transactions, uh, it will roll those back. In this case, there were none. And it, then it's going to recover. This is your typical relational database restart recovery routine. Um, it then uh, does a bunch of other things about uh, connecting to if, to connecting to this file and connecting to that file. If it can't find a file to connect to, then it's going to throw an error message. You can see one right here. Uh, at this point, it's open for business and ready to go. And this is a standard, normal type of log file. This is what you're looking for. And that's it for now.